Well, hello and welcome to my latest video. If you've seen my most recent video, which is called There Is No Gravel, uh, you will know that I did a, a gravel ride in Purbeck on the southwest coast of the United Kingdom. And it was probably my first real gravel ride in the sense that it was the first ride where I did uh, some actual riding on gravel. Done a little bit previously, but this was an actual gravel ride. So being the first one, I thought maybe uh, it would be quite useful if I did a, a few lessons that Jules has learned from riding on gravel. And here are eight, eight lessons that I learned about riding on gravel. Now I don't claim that there is anything massively profound about these lessons, okay? Uh, I don't claim that these are startlingly original. Uh, I don't claim that you would have come or would not have come across these particular lessons before. But uh, as somebody who has ridden on gravel, proper gravel, and as somebody who has learned a few lessons about riding on gravel, I thought I would share them with you. So let's start with number one, low gears. Get yourself some low gears. In fact, get yourself the lowest gears you can possibly get hold of. Why do I say this? Well, riding on gravel and riding on gravel hills or off-road hills is hard because the paths or the roads were not designed for cars with hairpins with a particularly limited uh, gradient although some hills obviously that you drive in a car are very steep but when you have a gravel path it tends to go straight up the side of a hill as opposed to the kind of squiggly hairpin that you're familiar with and you are going to find those climbs tough and if you're going up a climb or a hill that's like that and you are riding on grass or some other uh, organic kind of surface where grip is difficult then the lowest gears you can get your hands on are going to be a benefit number two i used mountain bike clipless pedals and although a lot of the time of course they're fine because you're riding on a flattish surface or you're riding on a slope and it's useful to get some extra purchase on the pedals there are also times where you have to unclip you have to get off the bike and therefore i think it would probably be easier if i had flat pedals i.e similar to what you might find on a mountain bike or any other bike with flat pedals come to that so clipless pedals have their place but if you're going to do some serious off-roading i would suggest that flat pedals are probably the best bet number three You'll probably have your route on a Garmin or a Wahoo or a Hammerhead, is it? Or other, other systems are available. So you're going to have some kind of GPS route which you'll be aiming to follow. But, 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 if you are off the beaten track, if you are off route, it's quite easy uh, to get lost. And I've found, certainly on my Wahoo, finding the route on the Wahoo, the detail just isn't there. So I have a phone which has got all of the OS or Nance survey maps downloaded onto it. And every so often I found it useful to stop the bike, have a look at the phone, check the OS map and see where the particular path went. Because they're not always as well signposted. It's not always that easy to follow. And in fact, if you watch my video, you will see that I got seriously lost, not lost in space, not, not lost like Shackleton would I ever be found. I got lost, meaning I got off the route and I had to find my way back onto the route and a map and if you carry a paper map like my friend Mark does well that's probably even better because an OS map on your phone is quite a little thing I'm sure you can work that out for yourselves lesson number four you need more water I was out riding on one of the hottest days of the year I was by the coast it, the sun was beating down it was a beautiful blue sky but it was tough going and I was sweating like a bastard. Now I had a camelback, which if you will look at the video, you will see I wasn't entirely comfortable using because it was new. Carry more water because if you're out in the wilderness or if you're in a place that is not 
blessed with lots of taps, the more water you can carry, the better off you're going to be. Number five, you will go slower than you think you will. So if it's hard going, I mean, the route that I took, because I got lost for various reasons, I ended up on a footpath and the footpath really slowed me down. So the average was about, I don't know, eight and a half miles an hour. So don't set yourself a big 60 mile gravel route and think, oh, well, I'll be punting around this at 50 mile, 15 miles an hour or something, because, OK, maybe you will. Maybe you're Peter Stettino or Colin Strickland or Ian Boswell or Lawrence Ten Dam or one of the other great gravel cyclists. Or maybe you're like me. And if you're like me, it's going to take longer. You're going to go slower than you think you will. So organize your route accordingly and recognize that the likelihood of achieving a big, fast pace on a gravel ride at least if you're like me, 65 years old, is fairly slim. Number six, I was lucky in the sense that I didn't get any punctures. I was using Panarasa Gravel King 38mm tyres with Tannis inserts, and I think the Tannis inserts are a real boon on a gravel ride. I went over some really sharp rocks, some really tough surfaces, some flinty surfaces. I didn't get a puncture. But that's, well, it's partly down to luck. It's partly down to the tennis inserts. But be prepared to get punctures. And I suggest if you're going tubeless, why would you go tubeless? Make sure you carry your anchovies or your bacon strips or whatever you call them. Make sure you've got yourself a spare tube. And if you're using tubes, make sure you've got at least two tubes, maybe three. And make sure you've got a decent pump. Don't just rely on a CO2 canister. On a CO2 canister carry a decent pump because if you get a puncture and you get more than one puncture you're going to have to pump up your tyres. Number seven my advice would be go with a buddy. Uh, yes of course you can ride on your own. Yes you can go out in the wilderness on your own. Yes of course you can do all of those things but if you're off road if you're out in the wilderness if you're out in the middle of nowhere things can happen things can go wrong accidents can happen you never know when you might need a little bit of support so my advice would be go with a ride buddy it also gives you somebody to talk to somebody to annoy in my case somebody to make stupid jokes to again in my case but just having a ride buddy well a ride buddy is a good thing anytime you're cycling but if you're going gravel riding i think a ride buddy is a good idea and the last the last lesson, don't ride on footpaths. Now, there's a number of reasons why, certainly in the United Kingdom, you, couldn't, you shouldn't ride on footpaths. For well, one thing, it's illegal. But I ended up on a footpath because we got lost, we got off the route, we found a footpath, we went along it. And the thing about a footpath, you see, is you come across a gate, or you come across a fence, or you come across a stile, or you come across some kind of obstacle that when you're on foot is pretty easy to pass. But when you're carrying it, or when you've got a bike, and even a heavy bike, if you've got to lift that bike over a fence, over a wall, over a gate, try and get it through a kissing gate, it's not necessarily that easy. So if you ride on a footpath, and you shouldn't ride on a footpath, but if you ride on a footpath, you're not going to do a great deal of riding on a footpath because it's not designed for bicycles. There are plenty of obstacles, there are low-hanging tree roots, low-hanging tree roots, low-hanging tree branches, up-swinging tree roots, things to trip up the unwary. There are massive boulders the size of the southern island of New Zealand and so you've got to be careful. So my advice, I don't know what the rules are in uh, New Zealand, but thinking of a country, or uh, the United States, or, or Singapore, or Hong Kong, Namibia, name your own country. I don't know what the rules are around footpaths. I suspect that as it's called a footpath, it's not supposed to be ridden on a bike. So you might manage it, but the chances are you're going to come unstuck. So there you are, eight lessons for your first or your next big gravel ride. Take them as you find them, use them or don't use them. But I hope you found them of some benefit at least. So thanks for watching and see you next time.